Good morning. Today is Thursday, Chof Aleph Menachem Av, the 21st day of Menachem Av. And today's class I want to dedicate in memory of my grandfather. Today's is your site, Israel Moshe, Ben Abshlem Zalman, and Shama Shalem and Aliyah. And let's begin. So today we begin a new letter of Igris Kedish, letter number six. And Igris Kedish is a part of the Tanya. It has different letters that the Alter Rebbe wrote. And as we mentioned before, the majority of those letters, letters were fundraising letters. And the Alter Rebbe, in his way of raising funds, is by explaining with the depth of tzedakah from many different angles, the meaning of tzedakah. And of course, as we mentioned, this was the tzedakah the Alter Rebbe was raised for, he was raising for the people who lived, who moved to the Holy Land back then, 200 years ago and more, where they had no source of income and the Alter Rebbe supported them. So, so the Alter Rebbe is going to explain in this letter about planting tzedakah, quotes a verse, planting of tzedakah, as the reward of truth. And we'll talk about this. And he's going to, in order to explain this, the Rebbe is going to explain what it, first he explains what it means to serve God in the way of Yaakov, which is compassion. So let's begin and then we'll go on to explain a little further. So as the Alter Rebbe begins a letter, it says, he quotes a verse in Mishlei, in Proverbs, that says, Zeirei tzedakah, Secher Emes, Mishlei Yudalef. He who sows tzedakah has a reward of truth. Now, what does that mean in the, first, in the simple understanding of this verse? Is when you give tzedakah, you have the reward, a true reward, meaning that you're surely receiving the reward. There are different explanations in this verse. The word secha has also the meaning of, uh, with a samach, has the meaning of a dam, when you hold up the water. So one of the ways was to capture fish. When you have the water running and you put a, a dam, you put a, something that blocks it, that is a sure way to catch the fish. And the same thing is when you have give tzedakah, there's a sure way to get reward. And that is the different commentators explain this verse that secha emes is the reward that is surely coming. However, the Alter Rebbe takes a different understanding of this verse. And he says, the word Secher Emes is that the reward for Tzedakah is truth. Truth is the reward. And this is what is going, is going to explain in length in this chapter, in this letter. This means that the attribute of truth is the God-given reward for sowing tzedakah. We need to also understand what it means, sowing tzedakah, rather, as opposed to giving tzedakah. But this will explain later. Then the Alter Rebbe quotes another verse, a verse from the prophet Micah, Micha, something we say every single day in the morning prayer. We say, It is also read, written, You give truth unto Yaakov, unto Jacob. Which would appear to indicate that once again, that the attribute of truth 
is granted from above. And Hashem is giving the attribute of truth to Yaakov. And Alter Rebbe quotes the Zoya that explains that this is actually a praise to Hashem that is giving the truth to Yaakov. And here the prophet Micah speaks the praise of the Holy One, blessed be he, as is written in the Holy Zoya. In other words, rather than petitioning God, this verse extols, his, extols him for fulfilling his promise of granting the attribute of truth to Yaakov. As Dal Trebe goes on to explain, Pirush, Shakadesh Bauchu, who are now saying me das emes le Yaakov. This means that it is the Holy One, blessed be He, who gives the attribute of truth unto Yaakov. So Al Trebe is asking a question What does it mean that God is giving the truth unto Yaakov? Does, doesn't Yaakov have truth? Isn't Yaakov one of the patriarchs that has truth? The holy people. This needs to be understood. Does Yaakov have no truth, heaven for fan, until the holy one, blessed be he, gives it to him from above? So this, these are the questions. What does it mean? that the reward for tzedakah is truth. What does it mean that Yak Hashem needs to give truth to Yaakov? Now to understand this, the Alter Rebbe goes on in explaining what does Yaakov represent. We know it says that Yaakov represents compassion. <clears throat> so let's... Uh, Say it a little bit by heart, then we're uh, outside and we're going to read it inside, we'll understand it better. So we know that we have Shlosha Avot, three fathers, three patriarchs. The three fathers, as the Gemara says, we don't call fathers only for the, these three. And why is that? Because they are the fathers of all the Jewish people, whatever they have. We inherit it just like the DNA of a father goes to a child. And the three fathers, they represent the three attributes. You have the Avraham, represents the attributes of chesed, kindness. Yitzchak represents the attribute of gevura, restriction and judgment. Yaakov represents the attribute of compassion. Now, when you talk about what is kindness represent? When you have kindness, who, who is the one who gives the kindness? And what is the one who has kindness? What is the focus of the person that gives the kindness? Is it the recipient that is the focus or the giver that is the focus? And while most people would answer that the recipient is a focus, the truth is the level, the attribute of kindness is an attribute that the giver just wants to give. And he doesn't care who he gives, whether the person deserves it or not. It is the giver that has this attribute of just giving. That happened by Avraham. Avram was just about giving to everybody and anybody. And that's why he said, Hashem told him he's going to have another son. Yitzchak Hashem. Avram says, let Ishmael live. He was about giving and giving and giving. When there was, uh, when after his circumcision, he had no people to give, he felt so terrible. Because Hashem made that it should be a very hot day. There was no guest passing by. So Avram felt terrible. And then Hashem gave, sent him some angels. You know, the Shuhid, he should be able to give to someone. So Chesed is about giving. The Gevura, 
the judgment is more focusing on the recipient, whether the person receives, deserves it or not. But then comes Yaakov. Yaakov has the attribute of compassion. What is a compassion? Compassion is something that you have even if the person does not deserve. You focus on the person, you focus on the recipient, but yet you say that even if the person doesn't, doesn't deserve to receive, I still have compassion and I still want to give to that person. So these attributes that we receive from our forefathers is something that is used also in the service of Hashem. When we serve God, we also can have serving Hashem with the feelings, with emotions, and we also have the ability of serving God with compassion. Now, what does that mean? Serving God with compassion. Now, when you have a feelings of love, feeling of kindness, is something in a way it's a certain there is a certain limit to these feelings you're going to feel love to someone that you feel that you understand that you're close with you're not going to feel love to a little ant that crawls on the on the, on the on the ground but the level of compassion reaches a much deeper level and goes further you can have compassion on a little ant so Serving Hashem with compassion means understanding and realizing the compassion on the soul that is in us, that is so far distant from where it's supposed to be. Because when a person is in, in, is in a bad place, is in a bad spot, if that person is born that way, he doesn't have anything, doesn't know anything better, then yes, you feel bad for the person, but it cannot compare the compassion to a person that really is, a, is royalty. And he was in a very high place, and yet he finds himself in a very low place. There, the compassion is much, much deeper. So Yaakov represents compassion. And we are using God's, uh, Yaakov's attributes of compassion to serve Hashem with that attribute. Let's see how the Alter Rebbe continues to explain this. So the Alter Rebbe, however, it is well known. The Midas Yaakov Midas Achmanus. The attribute of Yaakov is the attribute of compassion. And the service of God through compassion. How do you serve God through compassion? This is derived from the arousal in a man's heart of profound compassion for the divine spark in his soul. Which is distance from the light of God's countenance whenever the man goes about in the darkness of the vanities of the world. If you're royalty and you go in, in, in places that you don't belong, the places of darkness, that's a big pity. How do you arouse such compassion, says the Alter Rebbe? You arouse this compassion by meditating about the greatness of Hashem and the greatness of your soul and how far your soul fell down. This arousal of compassion itself derives from and is proportionate to a man's understanding and deep cognition of the greatness of God. Now, what is it in the greatness of God? So the Alter Rebbe goes on to illustrate a little bit based on what we learned before about the greatness of God. So he says, 
He reflects upon how even the most infinitely sublime worlds, the highest spiritual worlds, are considered as truly not before him. Even the greatest spiritual worlds, Atzillus, Bria, and so as we explained in previous chapters, they are completely as not in front of Hashem as nothing. And why is that? For all their God-given bounty and vitality derives from a mere ray and radiance of a single letter of his blessed name. As we learned last chapter, that says that the spiritual worlds were created from the Yud, the letter Yud, which represents the Chachma, the wisdom, and this world was created from the letter He. So the, all of the spiritual worlds were created from what? From one letter of Hashem. As it is written, the, word, the world to come, meaning the spiritual worlds, was created merely by the letter Yud of the divine name. Now, it is in this ray and radiance, which is an extension of the life-giving energy that flows from Hashem, blessed, blessed name, from God's blessed name, to animate the higher and the lower beings, only there, that there is a distinction and difference and with respect to the higher and lower beings. That the higher world was created from the letter Yud, and this world was created from the letter He, so that this world was created through the letter He, and so on, while the higher world were created through the letter Yud. So all of these differences higher world, lower worlds, is only differences in the state of godliness that is already reduced as becoming as a ray of light. The ray of light, if you just picture the ray of the sun. The ray of the sun is something compared to the sun itself is, is, is like nothing. It's just a little ray. And in this ray you have differences, higher worlds, lower worlds, also, also, all the variety of details within each world, all of the details, the, the variety of details is based, is determined by the differences in the combination of letters through which they were created. Yes, also we explained in the previous chapter that every creature has a combination of letters. The Hebrew letters are the source of energy for each and every creature. Not only the creatures are a result of the combination of letters, also, says the Alter Rebbe, time itself is also a creation. And time itself also comes from combination of letters. The letters of the name of Hashem. That's what Al Tereva says. So too, the distinction, the distinctions between the temporal dimensions of past, present, and future. And all the variety of events throughout the changing times. All these two are determined by differences in the combinations of the letters. We once told the story of the Alter Rebbe when he was in prison. He was there for 53 days. And uh, interrogators, they tried to get to confuse the prisoners and they put them in dark places. They didn't see the light of day for days, for days many days. So at one to confuse the prisoners. And one day, 
the guard comes in and he says the, to the Alter Rebbe, why are you awake? Why don't you sleep? It's already late. And the Alter Rebbe told him exactly what time it was. It was the middle of the day. So he asked him, how did you know? So he explained to him that the time is a creation from God. And each hour, each hour there is a different a different combination of the letters of the name of Hashem that gives the energy to this time. God creates this moment. And that's how I knew what time, obviously, a person on the level of the Alter Rebbe was able to sense the different energies that comes in this hour, and based on that, he knew what time it was. But even to people like us, there is also a message there. And the message is, the time, they say that the same time is money. <laughs> time is more than money. Time is something you cannot get back. If you have a mission to, to accomplish, and you're going to push it off of tomorrow. So the mission may be accomplished tomorrow. But if you didn't do what you needed to do today, then the time of today you cannot bring back. Time is a creation of God, and God does not create a single second, a single thing in the world for vain. Everything needs to be used out. That's what al Rebbe says also, that the differences in time also come from the differences of combination of the letters of, of Hashem's name. <laughs> for these combinations of letters, or they can't do it, of the life-giving force that proceeds from the attributes of God, the attributes of God, blessed, blessed be His name. As explained in the Lekutei Amorim, part two, chapter eleven, that was in the Shar Yichud Ve'Emunu that we learned. So this is all the ray of the light that has the, all these differences, the differences of levels, the differences in time, differences in creation, all the, these differences is only in the ray of the light of Hashem. But as, as for his blessed being and essence, it is written, I, God, have not changed uh, as a result of creation. No change was affected in God himself. Neither in the terms of changes in the progression from the, the uppermost of levels to the nethermost. There's no differences. Just as he is present in the higher world, so is he present in the in precisely the same measure in the nether worlds, nether world. Since from his perspective, there is absolutely no difference between them, and all are equally distant from him, for no thought can apprehend him at all, even in the higher worlds. So in, 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 in regards to the essence of Hashem, there is no difference. Higher world, lower world, he's totally above them. As explained in Lukate Amorim, chapter one, part one, chapter 51. So this is in the different worlds, and also B, in the terms of temporal changes, is there any difference from God's perspective? For just as he was alone, one and unique, before the six days of creation, so is he now after creation. We explained this in length, that the creation does not cause a change in God himself in the in the oneness of God. Everything is only in our perspective we are being created. Hashem allowed this. But for Hashem himself, Hashem is 
before, the one and only before and after. Vehainu, and that is because Mishum Shakol Kaim Veefes Mamish Lagabe Mehusay Vatsmusay, because the everything is absolutely as nothing and not in the relation to his being and essence. And Al Tareb is using an, a metaphor, an example from speech. And again, this is something we discussed in the previous part of the Tanya. That when he says that when you speak, when you utter a word, what is, where does the word come from? There's a whole process, there's a whole system. There's the intellect, the intellect leads to emotions, emotions leads to thought, thought leads to speech. So, and there is the essence of the soul that comes before the intellect. So one word that you say, does it have any significance in regards, in relation to the your potential endless ability of speaking, it bears no comparison, no relation. I mean, it's like you're going to say, you compare, you compare a drop of water compared to the ocean. It has very, very little significance. You would say no significance, but really, the drop in the ocean, in the ocean still has a significance because the ocean no matter how vast, it is still made up of drops. Many, many drops. Almost endless, but it's not endless. But if you take a comparison, compare this at the ocean compared to compared to a theoretical endless source of water, the ocean has less significance to the endless source of water than the drop has to the ocean. So we're talking about the letter, the word that you utter has no significance compared to the source of your speech. This is just to illustrate, to be able to understand a little bit of the of the relation of the world and everything in the world compared to Hashem himself. Says so the Rebbe here, with the Burai, just as a single letter of a man's speech or even of his thought is of absolutely no consequence in relation to the entire being and essence of the rational soul. And this is just an example to make us understand somewhat. This is metaphorically speaking, to appease the ear in order to give finite mortal mortals some inkling of the insignificance of creation in the eyes of the Creator. While in fact, as it is written, there is no comparison unto you. This is explained elsewhere in Likutei Amarim, the first part of the Tanya, uh, in the second part of the Tanya, chapter 9, see there. Zeu Sho'aimrim, this the Alter Rebbe continues and says, this is what we say by the davening, we say, Amelech, Amaromam, Levadem Yos. This underlies what we say in the prayers, the king who is exalted alone from a foretime. What does it mean alone from a fourth time? Pirush. So he says, that this means that just as a fourth time before the creation, he was alone. Nothing existed a part of him. He is now exalted and elevated beyond the days of the world. Pirush, which means This means that he is exalted and elevated, transcending the dimensions of time, which is known as the days of the world. This is so because the life force of all the days of the world the life force of the dimensions of time, this derives solely from the spiritual level known as the king. 
the king refers to Malchut, the lowest levels, the lowest, lowest attributes. In that level, we say Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Imloch. God was king, God is king, God will be king. You know the son? Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach. What is it? In this level of kingdom, kingdom is what the way he relates to others. There, time was created. Malchut, which is the lowest of the attributes of God. There, time was created. Above level of Malchut, there is no such thing as time. As is explained elsewhere. So this, all of this meditation, what does this lead a person to think? It leads the person to realize what a great pity on the neshama. The neshama, the soul that comes from such a high place, where the whole, from Hashem, that the whole world is nothing, no significance whatsoever, and yet the soul, the neshama, the spark of God goes down to a place of darkness. And when we're saying a place of darkness, we're saying it comes to a place that is, has even a potential to sin. Even a, a person doesn't sin at all, a tzaddik. Still, he's in a physical body that has the potential to sin. And that is a big pity. It follows that there is extremely great cause to feel compassion for the spark, which is a part of God above, that dwells in the dark and gloomy body. He calls it the hide of the snake. For the body is liable to contract impurity by indulging in prohibited things that derive from the three utterly impure calipers. We're not going to go into this now. And to become defiled by various lusts, maybe the merciful one spare us, involving things which through permitted uh, though permitted, derived from the clippus nega. So the body is able, has a potential to become defiled with either ultimate impurity or at least to become lost into permissible things, which is also not godly if, if you do it for your own lust and, and desires. And in order to save the soul from this, you need God's help. If not for God serving the man as a shield, and giving him strength and might to wage war with the body and its passions and to triumph over them. And this is what we say by the prayer. And this is the meaning of the continuation of this prayer. Master of our strength and so on. Shield our salvation. Shield of our salvation and so on. So this is what Dal Rebbe brings out in this lesson. That we shall continue tomorrow. Finish this chapter, this letter. But the point that is Alter Rebbe is, establishes here is the level of Yaakov which is compassion, and how we are able to serve God using that attribute of compassion is by meditating about the greatness of Hashem, how everything is nothing. And yet the neshama, which is comes from Hashem himself, goes down to this low, low place that arouses a compassion and asking Hashem to give us the strength to overcome all of these things, these challenges, and Hashem surely gives us this strength. So this is the end of today's share. We shall continue with Hashem tomorrow. Any questions we can take now? Thank you for joining. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Khan.